far, I've been talking about evolution and about our brains, but actually the research that I do is looking at what babies and young children do. Um, and what we've been trying to figure out over the past 10 or 15 years or so is how is it that babies, and therefore all of us who are just babies who've been around for a bit longer, um, how is it that we can find out the truth about the world? How is it that we can learn as much about the world as we do as quickly as we do? And what I've argued is that children are using a lot of the same techniques that are used in science. My first book was called The Scientist in the Crib. And more specifically, in the past few years, we've been collaborating with um, philosophers of science and computer scientists to try and figure out just what kinds of computations, just what kinds of programs are being run in those amazingly flexible brains. And what we've discovered is that babies seem to be using a lot of the same techniques as scientists. They analyze statistics um, and they do experiments. And as we'll see, they also do deductive reasoning. And a lot of the way that they think seems to be similar to ideas about statistics and science that were first proposed by this guy, the Reverend Thomas Bayes, back in the 18th century, and that have become the absolute core for modern machine learning techniques. So when uh, computers take an enormous data set and sort it all out and figure out what its structure is, they're using these kinds of Bayesian learning techniques. And what we've discovered is that even very young babies are doing the same thing. So if you want to know what's going on in the head of that beautiful baby, it's actually something like this. So those babies, that's a page from the Reverend Bayes' notebook. Those babies are sitting and doing calculations about things like uh, probabilities and hypotheses. Um, and the basic Bayesian idea is that you start out with a bunch of hypotheses about how the world could be. You go out and you gather data. You check the data against the hypotheses. And then you change the likelihood of the hypotheses. And we think that's exactly what even young babies are doing. Now, that may seem really kind of crazy. Anyone who's actually taken, let alone taught, a statistics class knows that even grown-ups are really, really bad at handling things like probabilities and statistics. Um, but of course, that's partly because we ask them about things like probabilities and statistics. Um, and fortunately, we can't, can't even start to do that with babies. Um, and in fact, part of the reason why we've learned so much about babies and why we were so wrong about babies before is because to get babies to tell you what they know, you have to ask them in their language instead of in our language. Um, if you ask an eight-month-old what they think about something, you won't get anything very interesting. And even if you ask a three-year-old, you'll get a beautiful poem about ponies and birthdays and poetic stream of consciousness, but you won't get anything that looks very logical or rational. So when we want children to tell us what they know, the way that we do it is by showing them real things in the world and then seeing things like what they prefer to look at or not, or what they reach for or don't reach for. And in my lab, we've been doing a lot of experiments looking at how children can make those inferences. And we do this with a very simple machine we call the Blicky Detector. It's a little box. It lights up and plays music when you put some things on it, but not other things. Um, and we just show the children patterns of probability about this box and then see what kinds of conclusions they draw. So here's an example of one of these experiments uh, with my student Tamar Kushner. Um, what we did was first we just asked the children what their first hypothesis about the box would be. Like a scientist, what would be your first guess? And almost all the children, probably like all of you in the audience, um, said that uh, they thought that um, you had to put the block on the box to make it go. But then what we did was we showed them patterns of evidence. Um, we did this with four-year-olds. Uh, and what we showed them was that if you waved the block over the box against their first hypothesis, the box, the box actually activated two out of three times. And if you made contact with the box, their first hypothesis, it only activated two out of six times. Okay, So that's a pretty subtle difference. But if you, again, were a statistician trying to calculate the probabilities, you'd say, aha, higher probability of the back box activating uh, remotely than it's activating when you made contact. And for the four-year-olds, we simply then asked them, make the machine go. Um, and they acted like good statisticians. They chose to wave the red block over the box rather than making contact with the blue block. And in fact, they did it exactly in proportion to the probability of the red block making it go versus the blue block making it go. Now again, remember these are four-year-olds. They're just starting to add and subtract, but they seem to be able to do the math to figure out 
what uh, the likelihood is of one thing happening versus another. So even these tiny babies are already unconsciously doing these kind of sophisticated Bayesian statistical calculations. Mm -hmm.